Hello everybody and welcome back to Physics Friday uh, brought to you by Physics Explained and today I've got a few stories for you uh, I'm gonna keep it light, I'm gonna keep it casual I don't want this to be too heavy on the science front that's what the website's for yeah so let's get started You may remember a few months back on the website that I did an article concerning an iGEM team from the University of York and well they competed last week in Boston over the uh, weekend they were designing a digital inline holographic microscope or a DIHM and they were developing a stable microbial co-culture system with two different cells E. coli and Chlamydomonas where light was the energy source and CO2 in the atmosphere was used to th synthetically create a biofuel. While the DIHM monitored the sample to adjust the environment around the system to sustain optimum production. Well, the good news is the team achieved bronze out of teams from all over the world. So I think from all of us here uh, listening and myself, we'd like to wish them a big congratulations. Uh, thoroughly well deserved and I know one of the team members personally and I know how much hard work went into it so yeah big congratulations from all of us. In other news you may have seen an article go up on Saturday concerning Jupiter and Venus the two Roman gods Venus being the Roman god of love uh, but not necessarily about the Roman gods it was about the planets uh, the two brightest planets in our solar system but they both come second to the moon and that's to do with the distance between us and the moon compared to us and Venus and us and Jupiter. Why were they in the news? Well, they were appearing together side by side within 0.3 degrees of each other across our night sky. This doesn't happen very often, it happened last year, um, but it just depends on whether the their orbits line up with our orbit around the sun and in fact our rotation of course we want this to happen at night so we can see it and this took place at 6 a.m. on Sunday morning uh, just a couple of little highlights from the article um, again this is up on the website Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system it is roughly two and a half times the mass of all the planets all the moons and all known comets within our solar system and it's around one thousandth the mass of the Sun. The reason this is so important is that gravitational orbits are affected by relative masses between uh, the two and because Jupiter is so big it actually affects the motion of the Sun. Obviously the Sun orbits around the galaxy and we orbit around the Sun. Jupiter actually shifts this orbit of the Sun and the two end up both orbiting a center of gravity which is not within the center of the Sun and there will be an article going up about that soon when I get time to write it but it's, it's quite a cool fact that Jupiter actually affects all of the orbits in the, because if the Sun's orbit is affected then our orbit around the Sun is affected and equally the same applies for all the other planets also in terms of space um, this is actually being recorded on the Thursday to be edited and published on the Friday so it hasn't actually happened yet when I'm recording but it will have happened by the time you're listening hopefully although it has been delayed more than once SpaceX now you may be familiar with that name uh, you may be even more familiar with the name Elon Musk he is the CEO of Tesla and the SpaceX project is designed to be a reusable rocket for planetary travel Specifically, it's currently aimed at Mars, I believe, and they're using a Falcon 9 rocket. This Falcon 9 rocket can take off and land vertically, refuel, and then take off again. So it is reusable, and if this mission this morning was successful, 
then that will be 20 upright landings. The idea of this mission, which will take off from the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, which is NASA's uh, launch site, is to deliver a Zuma payload, which is top secret. I don't even know what it is. Nobody seemed to know what it is. I couldn't find any references anywhere that would tell me what the Zuma payload was. It's for the US government and it's going into low Earth orbit, which to put that in perspective is anywhere between 100 and 1,240 miles above the surface of the Earth. So yeah, fingers crossed that that all went okay. I know the mission has been delayed a few times already this week. It was supposed to launch on Wednesday and then it's been pushed back. It was supposed to launch on the 16th and then it was pushed back again. So it's now launching uh, on the Friday and well, the Friday here, it will be the Thursday in America. And it's supposed to launch at between 1 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock in the morning GMT. For the second time this year, and not in that long a space of time really, um, a quantum mechanical prediction has been confirmed. This particular prediction, unlike Einstein's, was made in 1931 by Dr. Ronald Wilfred Gurney. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And this one was confirmed by Professor David McKenzie at the University of Sydney and his PhD student Enyi Guo. Again, hopefully I'm saying that right. And that was on the 13th of November, so that would have been Monday. And they demonstrated quantum tunneling. Now, if you don't know what quantum tunneling is, that is absolutely okay. Quantum tunneling refers to a phenomenon where a particle is able to move through a barrier that classical physics says it should not be able to. Classical physics and quantum physics predict different behaviours for things like electrons. In quantum mechanics, electrons can tunnel through barriers. That usually means a potential barrier, which is to do with electric fields. What they demonstrated was that an electron was able to tunnel through a barrier in water, in a water solution, and it moved away from an electrode, which would normally dictate a movement of an electron, and the way they detected it is fairly cool. It neutralized ions within the water solution and that changed an electrical current within the water. This was done using electrolysis. But what it does mean is that A, electrons can tunnel through water. Uh, the barrier in question was only a few nanometers in thickness, which in UK money is 1,000 millionth the size of a meter. Uh, in US money, that's a billion. And in the science world, that's also a billion because we use that system. But it does mean great things in terms of biological and, uh, research using electrons. So that's good news. The other quantum mechanical prediction this year was, of course, Einstein's gravitational waves. And again, you can find that article up on the website. And there will be an article going up about this quantum tunneling. Uh, it's just going to take me some time to get my head around it. I thought I'd finish off with a segment um, that I'm hoping to carry forward. Fingers crossed, hopefully it works. Uh, on this day section. I might even get a little jingle. Felix Friday presents on this day the history of science. The problem with that is if I were doing some sort of podcast that was just a general podcast or a news podcast or a human interest podcast, then that would be quite easy. Obviously, lots of things happen on that day. The problem with the science world is, um, as I've probably said many a time, is that science tends to work in bunches. You can go a week, two weeks, three weeks without any real breakthrough and then they all come at once. As it turns out, on the day of recording, uh, which is the 16th, um, there was one. I couldn't find one on the Friday, but I may have to uh, eat humble pie there and there may have been something that I wasn't finding. But on the 16th of November in 1945, the US government secretly uh, with no photos or interviews allowed, shipped 88 German scientists, and these were rocket scientists, over to the US. Now these particular scientists, and it's not that easy to say, worked under the Nazi regime. Uh, they were responsible for developing the V1 and the V2 rockets, and the US did this because they were worried that the Russians, who had occupied a large portion of Germany uh, by that point, were doing exactly the same thing. Now, in typical US fashion, the government said that these scientists had volunteered. Uh, 
but the story slightly changed as it unraveled and it turns out that these scientists were in quotation marks protective custody again I can only speculate there were no interviews made at the time it's thought the scientists contributed to US weaponry during the Cold War which is not surprising the V2 was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile and it made some serious advancements in liquid propellant so I guess in that case it ties in quite nicely with the SpaceX story early on in this podcast a nice full circle for the podcast there on a more personal note I would like to announce as of today the 17th of November Physics Explained is officially sponsored by Attention to Detail you can find a link to their website up on mine and yeah it's just nice to be finally making some progress in terms of building an audience and I hope you guys enjoy what I put out I hope you guys enjoy this podcast it's a little bit of time out of my day where I get to look into the world and see what's going on in terms of scientific discoveries um, yeah if you did enjoy the podcast and if you do enjoy the physics in five videos and if you do enjoy the articles please 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 share them with your friends it really helps me out I can only reach so many people and you never know they might enjoy it just as much as you enjoy it uh, but yeah, that's it from me this week uh, I look forward to finding out whether I was wrong in terms of on this day for the 17th let me know on the Facebook page at physics explained if you found something that happened in terms of scientific discoveries on the 17th and I will see you next week thank you for listening